Here are a few drivers McLaren should get to replace David Malukas in this year's Indy 500. So by now, everybody knows that McLaren terminated David Malukas for missing four races or more in this season, and that now opens up a very, very competitive seat for the rest of the season, as well as for the Indianapolis 500. McLaren had a ton of speed at the 500 last year, and I'm sure Zach Brown's phone lit up like a girl's DMs when everybody noticed that she deleted her boyfriend off of her Instagram. So who should get this seat? I think there's some fun options out there. There's one really logical option, and we'll start with that one first and then have some fun after that. First up, and the most logical choice, is public enemy number one in Argentina. That would be Callum Eilat, not Jeremy Clarkson. This time, just a different Englishman. Of course, Eilat does have two Indianapolis 500 starts for Hunko's Hollinger Racing in both 2022 and 2023. He's already tested and raced with the team this year, that being McLaren. Him sliding into that seat makes all the sense in the world. His WEC, World Endurance, um, requirements, they, they don't interfere with the Indianapolis 500. They do interfere with the Indianapolis Grand Prix. Coming up next weekend, they'll be having their six hours at Spa for WEC, so the team will have to find somebody to fill in the ride in the meantime. So, there is the thought process that they do take Cal Milot on for the Indy 500 and the rest of the year. Theo Porcher won't be doing it. He has a super formula race during Indy 500 qualifying weekend and not sure he really wants to do ovals at this point in his career. So there's two thought processes here. Either McLaren goes with Cal Milot because of course he does have experience with the team as well as the Indy 500 or maybe they go with somebody that can commit to doing both the Grand Prix uh, next weekend as well as Indy 500 qualifying and the Indy 500. Try to keep some continuity for for the team through the month of May. So outside of Eilat, who is a good pick for the Indy 500 and this seat in particular? Well, if you want to have some fun with it, we can throw some names out there and really just hope maybe that one of those guys gets it. Sage Karam is a name that you're going to hear from a ton. He is not running the race this year once again with Dry and Reinbold Racing. Instead, those DRR cars go to both Connor Daly as well as Ryan Hunter Race. So all the people in the comments on TikTok that were like, put Connor Daly in the car. He's already in a car. He's in a pretty quick car. At that, those DRR cars typically have some speed when they get to uh, the 500. So for Sage Karam, he's on the outside. He doesn't have a seat for the 500. He's doing some NASCAR stuff with Sam Hunt Racing. Him getting into this car makes sense. He's a nine-time Indianapolis 500 starter. Not a very good qualifier at all, but he is a two-time top 10 finisher in the race, both times starting 31st on the field. McLaren certainly has the speed to put their cars into the fast 12 assuming that they carry over the same speed that they had last year, which, you know, we learned from Ray Hall Letterman that that doesn't necessarily happen year to year. So maybe we got ahead of ourselves a little bit there. But Sage Karam is really good on ovals. Him getting into the car would make some sense. Outside of that, if you want to have a lot of fun, and I mean a lot of fun here, why don't they put Kyle Busch into the car? Kyle Busch was negotiating with Aero McLaren last year with Menards' sponsorship to be in the fourth car for this year's Indianapolis 500. Ultimately, that car went to the other Kyle, Kyle Larson and Hendrick Motorsports. They'll be attempting the double. Of course, that's been highly publicized and highly profiled at this point. McLaren rolling up to the Indy 500 with two NASCAR drivers alongside their two regular IndyCar drivers would be kind of funny in the grand scheme of things, but it would be awesome to see Kyle Busch do this. I've seen a ton of people be like, oh, he doesn't have the time to get ready. He doesn't have the ROP. He hasn't been approved, this and that. They don't. They can do ROP, the Rookie Orientation Program, when they get to the Speedway when practice opens uh, a little over two weeks from now. So, yeah, that's not really that big of an issue. Would Kyle Busch want to hop in on short notice, in a sense, and do this? I don't necessarily know about that. I mean, I think he would love to have sim time, a lot, love to have some of the prep time that Larson has had. I mean, Larson's now had... Two days of testing at the Speedway last year and then this year. He's also tested the car at Phoenix. So he has some real-world experience, which is definitely different than what the simulator is. But Kyle Busch getting that car would be super fun. Outside of that, J.R. Hildebrand. Give this man a redemption chance. Of course, he has made multiple starts with A.J. Foyt Racing as well as Dry and Reinbold, all in an attempt to try to win. The Indianapolis 500. Of course, the guy that was leading on the last lap in the last corner of the Indianapolis 500 in 2011 ultimately crashed coming out of turn four as he attempted to pass Charlie Kimball, got up into the marbles. Of course, you've seen the famous clip of his National Guard car just absolutely pounding the wall, limping down the front stretch, and Dan Weldon storms by to win his second Indianapolis 500. 
I guess everything kind of works out for a reason in that situation. But man, you would love to see J.R. Hildebrand get back to the speedway, get back in a ultra competitive car. And he's a guy that can absolutely wheel it around. Super smart guy, engineering mind. Um, him being in the car would be really fun, even if it's just for the one off, just for another chance at the speedway. If we want to get real crazy here. Somebody find out where Carlos Munoz is at the same way that Dale Coyne found wherever Luca Giotto was at. Apologies if I butchered his last name there. And pull him right out of obscurity like they're Dale Coyne and plop him into a car. Because that man at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was absolute money. When it comes to Carlos Munoz at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, like I said, the guy's money. He made six starts in the Indianapolis 500. Five of those starts resulted in top 10 finishes. Three of them resulted in top fives. Two of them resulted in runner-up finishes. The guy was money around the speedway. He's only 32 years old. He hasn't been in a car seemingly since 2018 from the best I can tell. Get him. Get him. Pluck him out of obscurity. If I give you one chance to bet to guess, rather, where he got his lone IndyCar victory at. I'm sure you would not have guessed the streets of Belle Isle in Detroit, but that's exactly what happened in 2015 when he won for Andretti Autosport. So good on him. He would be a really fun get, a blast from the past in the sense that he's only 32 years old. He could absolutely hop into the car and give you a good run, assuming he wants to. Another name that's going to get flowed in is a guy that's made two starts in the Annapolis 500 for Aaron McLaren already, and that would be none other than Juan Pablo Montoya. Go ahead, get him, pluck him out of wherever he's at in Miami, bring him over, let him run the Indy 500. I know he's 48 years old. Eh, it's maybe not a guy that can possibly win, but Juan Montoya is just a legend of the sport, so why not just give him another run at this? People are going to say Tony Kanaan. Ah, we don't need Tony Kanaan in here. We saw him last year. He had a good run. Move on from Tony Kanaan at this point. I know people are going to say, oh, you already said Juan, so why not TK? Also, to the person on Twitter that said, put Mick Schumacher in the car. What? Why would they ever put Mick Schumacher in the car? The guy has zero experience on on ovals, zero experience in an Indy car. That would never happen. Jimmy Johnson's name got tossed around as well. He has a contract now with Toyota. There's no way they're going to let him go over and hop in a Chevy-powered car over at McLaren. Also, so somebody mentioned Denny Hamlin. What? No point have I ever heard Denny Hamlin say he wants to race the Indianapolis 500. So, regardless, they're going to have to find a name. It's likely going to be Calm Isla, but they could have a lot of fun with it, which would be a good time for everybody involved. So, let me know in the comments who you would pick. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.